this whole house, which is doing more to protect children. Gambling is an adult activity, and it must remain an adult activity. That is a major reason why I applauded the decision taken by the Premier League to remove gambling sponsorships from their shirts, from their shirts fronts in coming seasons. And it's the same reason we are ensuring children can do no forms of gambling, either online or on widely accessible scratch cards. Finally, we know the current status quo disadvantages casinos, bingo halls and other traditional premises compared to their online equivalents. A number of assumptions which prevailed at the time of the 2005 Act now look increasingly outdated. So we plan to rebalance regulation and remove restrictions which disadvantage the land-based sector. Madam Deputy Speaker, almost every Member of Parliament will have met constituents whose lives have been blighted by gambling. Gambling harm, that is, the online world has transformed so many parts of life and gambling is no exception. It is our responsibility to make sure our rules and regulations keep up with the real world so we can protect the most vulnerable whilst also allowing everyone else to enjoy gambling without harm. I look forward to working with every member of this House to bring forward our gambling rules into the digital age and I commend this statement to the House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shadow Minister Alex Davis-Jones. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I also thank the Secretary of State for this update and for advanced sight of her statement. I too would like to pay tribute to all of those campaigners who have long been calling for better reform and regulation of the gambling industry. The Shadow Secretary of State had given her apologies for today, long before we knew of this statement, so I'd like to let the House know that today. But, Madam Deputy Speaker, what we all know to be true is that updated gambling regulation is long overdue. The last legislation on the statute books is from 2005, long before the huge rise and growth in online and mobile gambling opportunities. As a consequence, people have also now have the ability to gamble constantly and make huge losses in a very short space of time. I have met with many people whose lives and whose families' lives have been devastated by gambling harm. It is because of them that this House comes together cross-party to call for better regulation of gambling. Anyone can fall into gambling addiction, so we need a modernised, robust system which is fit for the future. From bingo to the races, some forms of gambling are, of course, a traditional British pastime. Around half of adults participate in some form of gambling, and the vast majority do so with enjoyment and in moderation. Indeed, as an example, bingo halls are an important part of sustaining our local communities, especially in coastal and rural towns. And let us be clear, Madam Deputy Speaker, bingo halls and adult gaming centres and casinos are facing their own pressures in terms of skyrocketing energy bills and concerns about the sustainability of their business models in the face of significant online competition. It is therefore welcome that there is distinction in the announcement between bricks and mortar bingo halls and low-stick adult gaming centres with the dangers that are unique to the online world. But I must push the Secretary of State further here. Although we have waited a long time for this statement, it is very light in substance. So can she confirm exactly how land-based and online gambling forums will differ in terms of their levy contributions? This is an important point, and I urge the Minister to clarify, both for the industry and for the 110,000 people employed in, um, in the industry. What has the economic impact assessment been with regards to the Treasury for this announcement? The government has delayed this white paper many times. Everything they are announcing today was ready to go a year ago. Six gambling ministers, four culture secretaries have all promised to publish this white paper imminently. That being said, Madam Deputy Speaker, we welcome many of the measures in the announcement, which are many of the things we have long been calling for, and it is a move in the right direction. She mentioned the Premier League's voluntary ban on gambling adverts on the front of shirts. However, this really is quite weak. The voluntary ban, as it stands, doesn't cover hoardings or even the sides or back of shirts. It also won't come into effect for three years. So in that time, what is to stop the Premier League from reverting on their voluntary ban once public attention has moved on? Will the Minister be pressing the Premier League to go further? I have some further questions about today's announcement, which I must press. Firstly, as I said, we welcome the levy, but can she tell us exactly what this levy will be? In addition, Labour welcomes the new powers for the Gambling Commission, but the Minister must confirm if they will get extra resource to match this additional responsibility. The Gambling Commission have already been found by the NAO to have insufficient capacity to regulate the industry, and now they'll have further things to regulate. So is the Shadow Secretary confident they will have capacity for the expanded role they'll take on? In terms of affordability checks, we know that further sharing between gambling companies is badly needed, and I await details of the checks in the consultation. However, it is vital that affordability 
audibility checks are set independently from the industry. So can the Secretary of State provide us reassurance on this? That brings me to my next point. The Minister makes reference to stake limits and safer by design mechanisms, which of course we welcome. But will they be based on how dangerous a product is? Who will decide that? It took years and the resignation of a Minister to get stake limits on fixed odds betting terminals. So can she reassure the House that these limits will have teeth and reduce harm from day one? Finally, it is clear that we need greater protections for children and under 18s. So will these measures cover stronger action on loot boxes and other in-game features that are proven to lead young people to be more likely to experience gambling, mental health, financial and problem gambling related harms? Madam Deputy Speaker, Labour has been clear that we stand ready to work with the government. We have been ready to stand for a long time to tackle problem and harmful gambling. And we have repeatedly called for updates and to this completely outdated legislation. The government has a real opportunity here to do the right thing, to make positive, real-world change for the better. The Secretary of State must commit to getting these updates over the line in good time. The time for more and more consultation has been and gone. So can the Secretary of State confirm and commit to passing all of these necessary statutory instruments before the House rises over the summer? She must crack on and make good on these long overdue promises. I look forward to further clarification from the Minister over the points I have raised and to ultimately work together to tackle gambling at its root. Secretary of State. Uh, well, uh, I, th I thank the Shadow Minister for her comments, and the uh, Shadow Secretary of State also made her apologies to me, so I'm very grateful uh, for her and understand the reasons for her absence. Uh, I'm pleased that she said that we need to update the rules, and this measure would have cross party uh, support. I very much look forward to working with the Shadow front bench on something that is uh, so important. Uh, she mentioned the delay, uh, Madam uh, Deputy Speaker, but, and I would like to reiterate a, a number of things. One is, of course, the measures that we have taken uh, over the past few years, which I mentioned uh, in my speech, whether that's cutting states on fixed odds, betting terminals, banning credit card gambling, reforming online VIP schemes, or introducing new limits to make online slots safer. Uh, she will know that I have been in post only two and a half months. Uh, this has been a priority for me. Uh, I have brought it in, I would say, uh, with some speed, uh, and that speed uh, and timeliness, I think, uh, she can be confident will continue to ensure that these measures uh, make it forward into the necessary regulations. We're bringing many of these measures through uh, by statutory instrument, which will speed up the process. And I very much look forward to uh, the Shadow Bench cooperation to ensure that we can bring these forward, uh, these measures, as soon as possible. Damien Green. Uh, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, I congratulate my right honourable friend for finally, finally. Uh, getting this white paper uh, published, and I particularly welcome the introduction of the statutory levy, which she will know has got great support on all parts of the House. Uh, the most disturbing fact uh, I've learnt in preparing for the Select Committee's upcoming investigation into gambling is that at this moment there are something like 50,000 children who are problem gamblers in this country. That is a truly shocking figure. So could my right honourable friend expand more on the really essential measures uh, in her proposals that will protect children from this terrible scourge? Uh, well, uh, my right honourable friend makes some very important points, and I think across this House we do want to ensure that uh, we protect children. And that's why, uh, in addition to measures that are already in place, ensuring, for example, targeting of advertising does not place, take place towards children, uh, there are a, a number of measures, including the ban. Uh, the voluntary ban that's taking place on uh, football shirts, but not just that. Uh, as I mentioned, we are ensuring that gambling is illegal uh, when it deals with uh, monetary gambling up until uh, the age of 18. So we will be uh, making it illegal for children to take part in scratch cards or um, uh, <coughs> slots that uh, uh, produce uh, cash. Uh, and of course, the statutory levy that he raises is so important because it is through the statutory levy that we can continue to look at research on how gambling affects children and can take uh, any uh, necessary measures in due course. SNP spokesperson John Nicholson. Thank you very much indeed, Madam Deputy uh, Speaker. And can I thank the Secretary of State for advanced uh, sight of her statement? Uh, we have consistently encouraged and pressed the government for action in this area, and as other honourable and right honourable members have said a dozen 
ministers responsible for gambling have come and gone since change was first promised. Clearly, the 2005 Act is out of date and grows ever more relevant to modern gambling realities by the day. Those vulnerable to harm, especially children, are not well protected under the current legislation. Uh, my party, these benches, and I will approach this important discussion with constructive dialogue to support evidence led legislation from the outset. Uh, perhaps the Secretary of State can outline the role, the precise role, of the Ombudsman, especially when it comes to protecting children, because I know members on all sides are deeply concerned with the huge rise in gambling amongst children. Uh, we will uh, work constructively with the government. We know that gambling destroys lives. And I'd like to pay tribute to so many charity workers and others who have pressed for these changes, and members across the House, on my benches in particular, the Honourable Member for Inverclyde, who has worked tirelessly on this. We will work constructively with the government in assessing what the right way forward is that protects the vulnerable from harm. Thank you. Oh, well, I'm very grateful for that constructive approach. I very much look forward uh, to working with him um, on the measures uh, as, they, as they progress. He mentions the non-statutory ombudsman. That is an important measure to ensure uh, that we redress the balance uh, between punters who feel that uh, uh, they, their issues have not been addressed sufficiently and uh, the companies involved. That is why we are bringing forward a, a, a non-statutory ombudsman uh, on which we will be consulting in due course. Sir Ian Duncan-Smith. Madam Deputy Speaker, I am grateful. Can I first of all say to my vulnerable friend, I welcome uh, what she has announced there. I particularly want to pay tribute to uh, uh, those on the all-party parliamentary group, the leadership of which the member for Inverclyde, and for Swansea East, uh, particularly the uh, leader for Swansea East, who has uh, with us uh, driven this uh, like an uh, in- unstoppable power and a force of nature, so I pay particular tribute to her. Can I just say that uh, I welcome this, Madam Deputy Speaker, because this is at least a start. I think it's a positive start. I think most of the recommendations made by the all-party group are in here, and I welcome that as well. But there are a couple of areas. One is to recognise this is about online harms, and the, the most harm that's being caused is from the online companies. Uh, physical betting shops, etc., are not part of that process, and I think, therefore, when she looks at those land-based areas, she'll recognise when it comes to the levy, the statutory levy, the majority of that should be borne by those who are doing online, um, and, uh, and that is important. The second thing is on advertising and children. I simply want to say to her, not far enough. I don't mean to be churlish about this, because I welcome it, but I do say this uh, voluntary position uh, by companies uh, uh, to have uh, uh, advertising off their shirts. Children, I'm a season ticket holder for Tottenham, they don't have a betting company in it, but many do, and children wear these things and they go to school sometimes in them and they advertise, therefore, these gambling companies on their shirts. <clears throat> so we need to recognise this is a permanent process, even if they move it to the arms. Uh, the point being made, it may, who knows, in two years they'll slowly creep from the arms to the front. So I would say when you consult on this, come back with a decision that actually we need to take control of this. But I welcome this, Madam Deputy Speaker. It's a step for security and safety and common sense, and that has to be welcomed by the House. Uh, well, I'd like to begin by commending uh, my right honourable friend for all the work uh, that he and others have done in this area. And it's because of uh, the points that they have made in their tireless campaigning, along with those who have suffered harms themselves you know, and their families. It is the result of all that work uh, that we are standing here today able to bring forward uh, this white paper. Um, he, he particularly mentions young people, and I share his concern. We must do more, which is why we are taking steps to make gambling illegal in so many other forms uh, for people who are under 18. And I, I do welcome the Premier League's announcement in relation to front of shirts uh, being banned uh, because uh, footballers are role models for our children uh, and we don't want to have young people going around uh, advertising gambling on the front of their shirts. They like to wear their football shirts. So I welcome uh, that voluntary move that's been taken by the Premier League, which uh, I know uh, me and uh, predecessors uh, have encouraged the Premier League to take. Of course, we will look carefully at evidence and uh, uh, that comes forward with, any, uh, with, the, with the funding from the statutory levy um, and keep all these matters under review. Kevin Brennan. 
thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and I thank the uh, Secretary of State for her, her statement and just managed to get a copy of the, the white paper. It was widely reported that um, there might be restrictions on over 18s introduced as part of the white paper, but looking at the white paper, it, it appears that it's more a, a, a commitment to um, consult on uh, asking gambling companies to think 25 <coughs> rather than to think 21 when, when going about age verification. Given the real issue we're trying to deal with is children gambling, could you just explain what the thinking is behind that particular provision? Uh, well, uh, the Honourable Member is right to point out that um, it is appropriate to also protect people who are over 18 um, and perhaps under 25. And uh, when he manages to read the whole of the white paper, I hope he will see our, our, our proposals in relation to online slots, uh, where there uh, will be a consultation on a, on a on a, a smaller uh, amount of money that could be bet by, by young adults uh, between 18 and 25. Damien Collins. Uh, thank you. Um, I congratulate the Secretary of State and the officials in her department on the work in producing this review. Does she agree, I agree with her that the Gambling Commission needs to be a data savvy regulator. Can she confirm that they will be able to run independently the background affordability checks in, without causing friction in the system? But also importantly, I think the, the rules that run the gathering of data and the use of data to target advertising and to power and to drive customers towards loot boxes. A lot of those industry rules were really written for the pre-smartphone world, and the Gambling Commission needs to make sure that vulnerable players are not being data profiled and targeted. Uh, as always, uh, my friend makes some uh, very important points, and I'm very pleased to have had the opportunity to discuss uh, these issues with him, given his expertise and knowledge in this area. He mentioned the player protection checks. Uh, those will largely be background checks that uh, will be seamless and frictionless tech checks uh, that will take place, uh, only affect 20% of people, and, and, and most of them will not know that anything is taking place, but are really important to ensure that gambling companies take their responsibilities seriously to check what is happening, as I said, in secret. He also mentions loot boxes. He will know that the, the government uh, is... Uh, is working with companies and pressing them to ensure that there are protections there as well. Uh, Carolyn Harris. Thank you, Madam yeah. 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 As Chair of the Gambling Related Harm APPG, I welcome this long overdue white paper. In the APPG's 2019 interim report, we asked for <coughs> affordability checks, parity with land and online stakes, an independent ombudsman, a curb on advertising, and most importantly, a statutory levy. Job done. Woo, the yay. APPG also pushed against strong backlash from the industry for all of the reforms that the Secretary of State mentioned earlier, not least FOBTs, measures on VIPs, and credit cards. But today is progress. It may have taken eight years of campaigning, nine culture secretaries, and ten changes in hair colour, but it's progress nonetheless. Today is a momentous occasion that many thought and many wished would never happen. But now the commitments need to be fulfilled. We don't need more consultation. We've had two and a half years since the review. Yeah. We need swift action, immediate implementation of the proposals, and urgent legislative change where it is necessary. After 18 years of the gambling industry's dominance <coughs> over this agenda, now is the time for levelling up. So I ask the Secretary of State, will she commit today to ensuring that these changes are brought in as a priority with no delay in tactics? Let us protect those who have lives have been affected by gambling-related harm and let's stop lying in the pockets of an industry who have had it on their own way for far too long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, I'd like to thank and hugely commend uh, the Honourable Member for Swansea East for all her work. Um, she, she has highlighted we have listened. Uh, and taken action. Um, I, and I really do commend her and thank her for her, for her work. Uh, as I said, I've been in post for, for two and a half months. I brought this legislation forward. She cannot, uh, she can be reassured that uh, I will continue to ensure, uh, together with uh, my junior minister, that this uh, action happens swiftly. She will know that following on from a white paper, there are various technical consultations uh, that need to take place. We need to bring forward these measures uh, largely through statutory instruments, and that is a process, but she has my utmost commitment to ensure that that is done as speedily as possible. 
Philip Davis. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And can I refer people to my entries in the Register of Members' Interests? Can I ask the Secretary of State how many regular punters she spoke to before bringing forward these proposals, particularly in relation to affordability checks at the rather bizarre and arbitrary figures of £1,000 a day or £2,000 over 90 days, which I think amounts to £22 a day by my reckoning. The Conservative Party used to believe in individual freedom and individual responsibility, but that seems to have gone out of the window with these affordability check proposals. Can she tell me when an affordability check is made, who decides whether or not an individual can afford the amount that they're gambling? Will it be the government? Will it be the Gambling Commission? Will it be the bookmakers? Or will it be the banks? And do the punters themselves get any say at all over how uh, they can afford to spend their own hard-earned money? I, I thank the, my honourable friend and for his engagement uh, on this issue. And I, I know that he, uh, like many others, wants to ensure that people, punters who enjoy a bet, who enjoy a flutter, are not prevented from doing so. He asks what engagement we've had. 44% of adults gamble, and we've spoken to quite a lot of them. Uh, we've had uh, 400 meetings on this issue to ensure that we take into account uh, all perspectives. And this is about this. The, the uh, white paper that we're putting forward today is about balance. It's about ensuring that people can go about their business doing what they enjoy um, without restriction, but at the same time protecting those people uh, that need protection. And uh, those those checks that he talks about. Um, most people will not even know that they are happening. Uh, they will be frictionless. They'll happen behind the scenes for 80% of people. They will nothing at all for 20% of people. That will just be a simply a check on whether you've been made bankrupt or whether you've got a county court judgment against you. You will not know that that check is taking place. It's take, those sorts of checks take place in a whole variety of different instances, uh, but they are there to ensure that in the very small percentage of cases, uh, where an operator needs to double check that somebody it might be going down the wrong road, that those checks take place. Those, I should emphasise, those checks are already taking place. Gambling companies already have a responsibility uh, to ensure uh, protection of those that gamble with them. And what we're trying to do is to protect people like the nurse who spent £245,000 uh, over a period of a few months when the gambling company knew that she had a salary of £30,000. Those are the sorts of instances that we want to stop uh, with our proposals in the White Paper. Uh, Clive Efford. De Deputy Speaker, I, I, I welcome today's, today's White Paper, but can I just ask a question uh, on the issue of the statutory levy? because it's all well and good uh, imposing a statutory levy and I welcome that, but how that money is used is vital and it has to be independent of the industry. The researchers mm -hmm. have to have access and free and open access to the data and they have to be free to choose what research they undertake and those in the gambling industry should not have any sway over what is researched and what is not. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can give uh, my, the honourable member the assurances he wants uh, that uh, they will not have a say in what the money is spent on, and we will ensure that that money is spent appropriately. Stephen Crabbe. Deputy Speaker, I welcome the tone that the Minister is striking today, and uh, tackling problem gambling and particularly protecting vulnerable people is, of course, essential. Does the Minister recognise that the gambling industry, whether it's to everyone's taste or not, does have a symbiotic relationship? with grassroots sport in this, in this country and not just horse racing. So what steps is the Minister going to take to ensure that it, with the regulation that she is rightly taking forward, we don't damage grassroots sport in this country? Well, um, I'm very grateful for the intervention of my right honourable friend because he's made a really important point. Uh, we have a world-class industry that brings in, uh, that has revenues of billions of pounds, um, who is uh, putting money through its taxes uh, to support many of our public services. Um, and for the majority of people, um, it is offering something that they enjoy. So that is why we're trying to strike this balance, uh, uh, this balance between allowing that to continue whilst at the same time protecting um, problem gamblers. There are th uh, we estimate around 300,000 problem gamblers uh, and, and, and protect those at the same time. 
Ronnie Cowan. Vice yeah. Madam Deputy yeah. Speaker, I welcome the statement. I haven't had time to read the 250 pages of the white paper, and I'm sure the devil is definitely going to be in the detail. I'm not as enamoured by the statement as other members seem to be. I'm delighted that our hard work has been recognised. I think it's only really important today that we recognise the hard work of those campaigners, the yeah. people who have lived experience, the people who have lost loved ones, yeah, who have yeah. completed suicide yeah. through their addictions to gambling, and the hard work they've done to bring me to this place and to allow me to express their opinion to uh, and the smart levy answer was, was the smart levy question was going to be one of mine. I'm delighted to hear that industry are not going to have their fingers on that pie. That money must be ring fenced and channeled through the NHS so it's used properly. Uh, I'd see one line in the statement says working with industry and gambling commission. I would just caution there, they are part of the problem. And if we're going to work with them, you have to work with people who have experienced the gambling harm in the first place to get a balanced view on this. And I would echo the, the sentiments of the Honourable Member from Chingford and say, if we're taking football adverts off the front of shots for EPL teams voluntarily, that should be uh, encased in law. What happens to kids who follow a championship team, or a first division team, or a second division team, or an SPL team in Scotland? Those children are still going to be exposed to those adverts, and yet we're acknowledging that they do harm. If the adverts do harm, they've all got to do, all got to go, all shirts, all round the stadium, all round the pitch, in between games, on the television, on the radio. If advertising does harm, all advertising has to go. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I'd like to commend uh, the Honourable Member for the work that he's done in, the, uh, uh, in this area. And also, he, he rightly recognises the work of a whole range of gambling uh, campaigners who are, have been affected by this issue. And I'm really pleased to have met uh, many, gambling group, many gambling campaign groups to hear their stories and see how they uh, have been affected. He's right to talk about uh, advertising towards young children, and that's why it's already prohibited uh, to target adverts uh, towards young children. I, I must say we, we, we must welcome what the Premier League has done, and as I have said, the statutory levy uh, will enable us to look at this issue further, and uh, if necessary, of course, we can take other steps in the future. Greg Whitaker. Deputy Speaker, and can I refer members to my registered interest as well? My right honourable friend has said that she wants to protect the vulnerable uh, with this review, which is a name that everybody in this House wants to achieve. But you can understand my surprise, though, uh, that in her statement we see no mention of the fact that in just under half an hour you can Google non gambling aware bets and you find over 400 regulated sites with no protection or checks for the vulnerable. We see little or, or, or no mention of the scourge of scratch cards to protect the vulnerable. And I also didn't hear a mention uh, companies that are for profit fundraisers who openly advertise to the vulnerable as well. So, will my right honourable friend agree with me that unless gambling in the round is considered and in a balanced way, the aim of protecting the vulnerable will still be being debated in this place in the next 20 years? Uh, well, I thank my honourable friend for his points. It is a very extensive um, white paper, and um, many people have mentioned the 250 pages. And within that, there are a lot of provisions to protect a lot of people. Um, he, he rightly mentions uh, that we need to stop punters going to the black market, and we need to strengthen gambling commission and local authority powers and resources. And that's one of the things that is highlighted in the white paper that members will have an opportunity. Uh, to read when they have a little more time. The, the regulator will be able to block or take down black market operators and, where necessary, suspend or take away licences uh, from companies uh, which break the rules. As well as I mentioned already, we are um, increasing the age for our, a number of other types of gambling. Thank you. Uh, Paul Bromfield. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And can I thank the Secretary of State for acknowledging the work of my constituents, Liz and Charles Ritchie, and for her engagement with them, uh, and indeed the engagement of her predecessors. While warmly welcoming much in this statement, as I do, I know that Charles and Liz will be, along with other families bereaved by gambling addiction, deeply disappointed by the failure to tackle advertising, yeah, yeah. and particularly in football, she rightly highlighted, and others have too, the shocking number of children who are addicts or have problems with gambling, 11-year-old and, and, uh, and, and younger. Now, for many, football is the hook. 
Now, in the action that they took, the Premier League recognised that advertising is harmful, but a front of shirt ban isn't enough. Fans are exposed to an average 700 ads at every Premier League game. Now, other countries have acted. So will the Secretary of State think again on that issue? Because the campaign for comprehensive action on advertising won't stop. Well, I thank uh, the Honourable Member for his points. And it's been an honour to uh, speak with uh, the Riches, who have articulated uh, their case uh, so well. Um, and I know uh, that they and others would like us to go further, as I am sure the gambling companies would like us to go less far. And so what this white paper does is seek a balance between allowing people to go about their lives uh, who are not suffering harm at the same time as protecting those people uh, who unfortunately are harmed. Uh, we, the position already is in relation to advertising that you cannot uh, target, advertise, advertisements should not target children. We've seen the measures taken uh, by the Premier League, which uh, the government uh, was uh, uh, very, very uh, firm and uh, made its position very clear to the Premier League as to um, the action they, they ought to consider taking. And as I have already mentioned, we will look uh, very carefully at any further research that comes out and uh, would take action if that was necessary. So Desmond Swain. Will she take this opportunity to review the uh, dated and rather severe uh, regulatory regime in which the Lotter postcode lottery and the hospice lotteries have to operate under? Uh, well, I know society lottery, uh, lotteries uh, bring in uh, valuable revenues that are um, enjoyed by uh, communities. One of the changes that we are making is in relation to raising the age uh, to ensure that we protect young people, uh, but always happy to continue to look at the work that they are doing. Spella? Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, and can I refer to my entry in the Members' Register? The Minister read out almost a race card of her predecessors, and so can we congratulate her on the, sh in the short time with which she's managed to get out this white paper to get a much better public debate? But isn't the danger that any regime will be vulnerable to offshore, out-of-jurisdiction opera operators who flout the regulations and undermine legitimate companies? So will she mobilise a whole-of-government approach, including the crime agencies, the Treasury and the banks, to tackle the gambling black market to ensure the success of her reforms while also protecting a major British industry and its workers? Yeah, uh, the Honourable Member makes an important point because people have said to me, if you tighten up the rules uh, in relation to legitimate gambling, all you're going to do is drive punters offshore. And that is why, in this white paper, we are also stopping punters going to the black market because we're strengthening uh, the Gambling Commission and local authorities' powers and resources. And the regulator will now be able to block or take down black market operators and, where necessary, suspend or take away licences from companies who break the rules. Selene Saxby. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And very much in the same vein, whilst welcoming so much of today, um, your, the Secretary of State is quite right that it is the advent of smartphones which has seen such a change in gambling behaviour. And what more is actually being done so that if you choose not to um, pursue a legitimate operator because you don't want the affordability checks or some of the other new regimes, just pressing Google and finding so much more. Is there going to be more being done really to clamp down on the black market, particularly when it's so accessible just through your handheld device? Uh, yes, I can confirm that the, the regulator will be able to block or take down black market operators or, where necessary, suspend licenses, licenses from companies who break the rules. Uh, Jamie Stone. Madam Deputy Speaker, 400 people a year round about that number take their own lives each year into gambling harms. It is rather a personal issue for me and for my home committee because a much-loved GP in 2007 did exactly that, and he's still missed today. We all mourn his passing. It's a very moving memorial to him outside the local health centre. So can I, can I say to the government, can we crack on with this as fast as humanly possible? 
because you know if we'd had this legislation some years ago this gentleman might, might be still with us um, well I, that, I, I, my thoughts are with all those who have lost their family members and I hope they will look on today as a, a moment where, which they have contributed to. Um, I know it has taken some time, but I would like to point out, Madam Deputy Speaker, that this is the largest reform that we've had since 2005. It is game-changing, um, and it, was t it is, of course, right that, that where we bring our regulations up to the smartphone age, uh, we take the time to make sure that we get those regulations right. Mark Fletcher. Speaker, I welcome today's statement and look forward to reading uh, the white paper and the measures within it. However, it does feel like a sense of deja vu in that every time uh, we look to clamp down on an area in which people, vulnerable people, are being exploited and the gambling industry profits off of their vulnerability, they move on to find a new platform or a new method in which they can exploit. So, what sort of confidence does the Secretary of State have in the future proofing of these measures? And will she commit to making sure that there are constant reviews of this legislation? Because the gambling industry is very powerful and has a big and very persuasive approach to this place. And it is important that these vulnerable people are protected. Uh, well, my friend makes a, a very important point. We, of course, need to keep matters under review. And I think the statutory levy will enable us and help us do that to ensure not only do we keep up uh, with what's happening in technology, but we also have the evidence to back up any policy changes uh, that we need to bring forward. Ian Mayans. Deputy Speaker. Um, the end of gambling company sponsorship on Premier League team shirts is, of course, a welcome step by the Premier League, but that's not until the end of the 2025 2026 season, three yeah. years oh, hence. Yeah. It yeah. is not good enough, there's not enough urgency within that. And everyone who watches sports coverage, particularly <coughs> football on TV, are constantly bombarded with images and repetitious advertisements urging them to partake in gambling games, spot bets, betting up as for particular scores or match outcomes. What are children watching those <coughs> matches on TV meant to do? Hide behind the sofa, cover their eyes, put their fingers in their ears. It, they're being bombarded constantly by this. It has become far too normalised and is, <coughs> is, we know, damaging lives now with regularity. Action and urgency is imperative. Uh, I, I, think I recognise the points the honourable member is making, but I, I would like to. Um, congratulate the Premier League on the action they've taken because they have talked about it for a long time and they have now taken action. Uh, and so too today the White Paper brings in a large number of options, uh, uh, actions that really uh, will make a significant uh, difference. Uh, of course, we will uh, obviously uh, con keep matters uh, under review, but the statutory levy will help us and enable us to do that. Greg Smith. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. It was ever thus that when governments <coughs> ban or curtail legitimate activities, underground markets do bubble up to fill that void. And I was struck by uh, some evidence from the Institute of Economic Affairs that shows even without things like stake limits, 5% of UK gamblers have used unlicensed and unregulated sites, and half could actually name a site to go to to gamble in an unregulated way. So whilst I hear uh, the measures that she has outlined around greater powers for the Gambling Commission, Gambling Commission to shut down black market operators, what assessment has she made of the volume of current gamblers that could move to underground uh, gambling? And does she think that the Gambling Commission, even with their new powers, would actually be able to keep up with that? So it is important that we ensure that we protect people um, from both legitimate gambling where we have problem gamblers but also um, the black market. I would just like to emphasise uh, one important point though because some of the measures that we've brought in today are already, being, uh, are already in place for some companies. So some responsible companies are already taking measures that we have announced today. Uh, and they have punters, and they have successful operations. The issue is 
that not all companies are doing the right thing. And so what our measures do is seek to ensure consistency across the board um, so that we ensure that the people who are, right, who are doing the right thing are not prejudiced and that we protect uh, those people who might become problem gamblers. Um, Carol Monaghan. Speaker, the Secretary of State has said in her statement that she will ensure that children can do no forms of gambling, including online gambling. Can she confirm whether that will be through an age verification process and how exactly will that operate? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it is already the case that it is illegal for people to be um, uh, gambling online, and there are also some protections in place. And of course, we will uh, continue to ensure that those protections are strengthened. French? Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, clearly, there is a delicate balance between addiction and the safe enjoyment of gambling, and as always, the devil will be in the detail. But what assurances can my right honourable friend provide today that these proposed reforms will not negatively impact people's enjoyment of a day at the races, or perhaps a football bet on a Saturday, or a night at the bingo? And also, our much loved British sports, including horse racing, which employ thousands of people across the UK directly and indirectly. For, for those people who are betting occasionally and for a matter of enjoyment, um, these, these uh, measures will not make any difference. That those people will still be able to enjoy their leisure activities. What these measures are designed to do is to uh, help and protect those people who are problem gamblers, whose lives are potentially going to be ruined. So I, you know, can I still encourage those people who want to take part in what is an enjoyable and leisurable leisure activity for millions of people across the country. We are trying to strike the right balance there. Andrew Gwynn. Thank you. I welcome a number of the measures that she set out today, including the statutory levy, but also importantly, I think for most, if not all of us in this House, uh, the protections for children and young people, particularly in the online sphere. Given that technology moves at a great pace and many of the advances that we've seen in technology uh, and the problems associated with it when it comes to uh, gambling since 2005 could not have been foreseen 18 years ago. What assurances can she give, not only that the rules that she's setting out now will be updated in future, but also that the powers and the resources and the capacity of the new regulator will also be kept up to date with the moves in technology? It is fundamental that we continue to look at this issue as technology changes. But uh, the Honourable Member mentioned the statutory levy. So the statutory levy will enable us to have research, make evidence-based policy, but it will also allow, uh, if appropriate, um, education, education of young people, uh, so that even when technology changes, they understand the issues that may face them. Shannon? Sorry, um, can I first of all thank, thank the, uh, um, the uh, Secretary of State very much for the statement uh, and on the Gambling Act review. I, I feel, and indeed many of us feel here, positive progress, so well done, Secretary of State, on that. I myself have concerns with the accessibility of gambling on uh, smartphones, and I want to ask a specific question if I can. Um, as, as a photo of the ID to prove age on betting apps is necessary, some under 18s have been buying fake IDs to enable them to bet underage online. So what discussions has the Secretary of State had with large betting organisations to do more in-depth scrutiny into the legitimacy of ID used for betting? Thank you. Of course, it is of course important that we protect uh, young people. It is important uh, that people do not gamble under the age of 18, and of course, betting companies uh, have to ensure uh, that uh, people are following their rules. Robert Ferrier. Mr. Speaker, as a Vice Chair of the Gambling Related Harm APPG, I thank the Secretary of State for her statement and welcome the long awaited white paper. There's parts of it I don't agree with, but that's for another day. This month, the UK saw the opening of the first women only residential treatment centre for gambling addiction. It's catered towards women's needs, including a consideration to childcare demands, as women on average spend less time in treatment than men for, for this reason. 
Does the Minister agree that this highlights the need for an intersectional public health focused and free to access treatment programme which offers tailored support to those who require it? Well, I was very pleased in my engagement to speak with clinicians who are dealing with uh, gambling harm. Um, and I'm very pleased that the statutory levy will ensure that NHS trusts uh, will take the funding that previously they have turned away uh, because of where the money was coming from. So I do think that the measures that we're bringing forward today uh, will help those people get the support that they need. I thank the Secretary of State uh, for her statement. And we now move to business statement, leader of